Hey everybody, Bruce Elgort from Clark College Computer Technology here, and I want to take a few minutes today to show you something that I've um, learned how to use, and that's auto grading using GitHub Classroom. Up to this point, I would have to download students' repositories and go over their code uh, and provide them feedback. But one thing that um, will now be able to do, instructors that teach this class, is to have uh, the submissions auto-graded, or for the most part auto-graded. There's still gonna be some things that are gonna need to be done, but let me let me show you. So here's a, uh, you know, a typical assignment that somebody in a Python course at Clark College would have to, you know, code, right? There's three problems, uh, and when they accept this assignment, it brings them to what's called GitHub Classroom. And I've already accepted this assignment. It's asking me to re-accept re since I'm delivering you a demonstration. And if I accept the assignment here, it's going to create a GitHub repository with the, the code that I need to develop or the files that I need to code the solutions for these problems in, all right? So let me do this. Let me um, get this code right here down on my workstation. This is the typical workflow that students would have to go through, and this is not what I want. Let me just bring up a new window. Okay, right here, let me minimize this one. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna clone down the assignment. This is, you know, a common workflow. And on my desktop, in the demos folder, I'm gonna place uh, this code that the instructor wants us to start working with. Now, these are the stub files that the instructor provided us. Again, we need to put, I need to put as a student, my code right here for problem one, right here for problem two, and right here for problem three, right? So there are a bunch of other files here, and these are unit tests. These are going to test the uh, inputs and outputs of the student developed code for problem one, problem two, and problem three. So I have the solutions uh, written for uh, all of these problems, but I'm just gonna bring up one of them now so I can show you here, if I can find the right window right here. So I am going to take all of the code for problem one, I'll just take the code itself, whee, and I'm gonna copy it. Okay, I'm done here. And I am going to just close this window and I'm gonna bring up the other VS Code window, which is right here. So pretend I'm the student and I'm gonna code my solution. I'm just gonna do this. All right, so there's my solution and I'm going to uh, stage my work so it can be pushed back to GitHub. Again, this is, Students know how to do all these things. And I'm gonna say, ready to grade. And please note that I've only done one of the problems here. I'm gonna push it back up to GitHub. And now what I'm gonna do as the instructor, here is where I will see each and uh, every uh, student submission. And right now you can see that uh, Belgort-Clark, that's my username, uh, hasn't passed any of the tests. It says zero out of 90, all right? Zero out of 90. But I did do one of the problems here, so uh, maybe it's a little slow. Let's just go here and look. There it is, see that? So I got 30 out of 90. There are three problems worth 30 points each. So I passed one of these tests that were uh, provided to me by the instructor. Right, So you, as the instructor, will be able to see that Bruce got you know one of the three problems right, all right? Now, I'm just going to put the other two solutions in there just so you can see this right here, all right? So I'm gonna go uh, right here. I'm gonna copy my solution for problem two. Okay, there we go, problem two. Uh, let me just... I should have bit better window management here. No, not that. Uh, window, oh, I closed it, look at that. So let me open it back up. And again, this is just, 
I'm just trying to show you here as an instructor how these things, uh, this thing is going to be able to change the way you work. And let's get problem three while we're here. I keep bringing that up. Let's go here. Uh, actually, let's go. Let me see if I have it. No, I don't have the window up. So uh, let's go here. I keep closing it. It's just a bad habit of mine. So let's go back here and copy problem three solution. Here we go. There's my code. And I'll go now I can close this. Okay, let me just, whoops, let me just close this. Okay, there we go. All right, so go back to VS Code with my code. Man, I'm being really, uh, I haven't recorded in a video in a little while, so let me just go back. Here's my, you know, my solutions. I'm the student, okay? Here's my code. All right, so I'm now going to go back, and I'm going to type, uh, I'm going to stage the other two problems that I did and say ready to grade, okay? And I will sync, which is gonna push my work to GitHub Classroom. And then when I go back here, right, hopefully I'll see once the GitHub Actions, the unit test run, um, I'll see 90 out of 90, because I know I coded them correctly. So let's go here. Just, it does take uh, some time sometimes. And I'm being an impatient because I'm hitting refresh, refresh, come on. Okay, there it is, look at that. So all of the unit tests passed. So I did my code correctly, all right? So this is gonna help us out as instructors. And let me just give you a peek at the unit test, all right? So here is the unit test for problem one. It's gonna check to make sure that the, the file exists, problem one, uh, problem underscore one dot pi. It's going to mimic keyboard input. It's going to run the main function, and then it's going to get all of the output. So all of these things here are assertions that have to occur in the program. It needs to print this with a new line. It needs to ask this. It needs to print this. Then it needs to show this for the value of 5 that was uh, input, the value of 25, the value of 125, 15, 62, and 109, 38, right? So these are all the expected output if I run this, you know, with the number five. And of course, if I want to repeat this test with a different set of uh, inputs and outputs, I would just either put this code here into a function and call it, you know, with a parameter, or I would just, you know, it's not a lot of code, I can just copy uh, you know, and, and paste it here with new new values, all right? So that is pretty dang cool, if you ask me, because normally I would have to clone all of these things down, all of these problem sets down, these repositories, and, you know, manually grade them. Now, there are some caveats. The caveat, the caveats are that students would have to use either F strings for formatting printed output, or they could take a string and use the dot format method. But the way that we use print with you know commas and parameters and stuff doesn't work with, with uh, Python unit testing, or not very easily. Uh, so that's just one caveat you need to know. And uh, other than that, you're gonna have to require that students match your output exactly, right? So in the assignment right here, right, we would have to state as instructors that we need to see exactly what we see on the screen here with capitalization, with colons, with spaces, etc. It's not a lot to ask for, but again, uh, every time a student pushes their work to GitHub, um, it'll auto, it'll run through the unit test. Now, I know some of you are going to ask, you know, can you, can you just tell me a little bit more? So I'm going to edit the assignment and write down, uh, right here, I'm running uh, grading and feedback. This is part of GitHub Classroom. And if I edit the first one and I go here, you can see that I'm running the, uh, that actually, this is the test name, right? test uh, underscore problem underscore one dot pi. This is supplied to me by 
uh, GitHub Actions. And this is the command I, run a, I want to run, pytest, and then the name of the Python file containing the unit test. And then I can assign a number of points for that particular unit test. Now, what's going to be required is that uh, we as instructors write unit tests, right, for each and every problem set. And it takes time because you got to test them. And uh, again, the um, an error will occur if there's like something like even like if I do this, if I made this lowercase t, all right? Now, there are libraries. Harvard has created Check50 to allow regular expressions to be part of the assertions. Uh, and I've done a lot of work with the Harvard uh, library and this. And so far, I'd rather have students create exactly the expected output than allowing them some leeway, especially that it's going to help them and it's going to help me. And the other thing that students can do is they can actually run the unit tests, right, for a particular um, uh, problem set, okay, um, just within Visual Studio Code. So as you can see here, I clicked on the beaker, and you can see that it, I have unit tests for each one of these problems. And a student could actually go and run, like for, for problem set one, and see that, look, everything was good. Same thing if I do it for problem two, see? And problem three, pretty neat. And again, we're gonna have to educate students on this type of thing, but think about how beneficial this is, uh, you know, for students and for us as instructors, all right? So that's it, that's all I have for now. I just wanted to show this to you. Uh, I've been, you know, researching and, and, and studying it for a while, and for the most part, I dig it. And it's gonna take, it's gonna take some work, but imagine being able to go into GitHub Classroom like you currently do when you see everyone's repos and see which ones have passed the unit test and which ones have not. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions whatsoever, please let me know. Take care and thanks for watching.